Hey everyone, this is Jam for Mad with your Tech Tech and more. This video is part two of two, the teardown and setup for the DisplayLink USB-C Universal Quad 4K docking station with 100 watt power delivery from Targus. Okay, let's jump right in and take this dock apart. Let's see some innards. The screws are located under the bottom, under the large rubber pad. There's six of them, one in each corner and two in the middle. Now that the screws have been removed, we can get our first peek at the inside. We can see a large metal RF shield with some heatsink fins. Also the top of the case is where the screws from the bottom are attached. A simple sandwich design. Mm sandwich. Alright, let's take a closer look inside and see how we can extract the innards from the bottom of the case. Okay, I can see 11 screws on top. I've highlighted 6 in blue and 5 in red. The blue ones hold in the innards into the case and the RF shield, while the red ones only hold the RF shield to the heat sink. Alright, let's unscrew this already. Now that I've taken all the screws out, we can go ahead and remove the RF shielding. I know I was going to take the innards out in one big piece, but there's no point in doing that now. Before we can take out the innards, it looks like the front metal panel slides out. Let's get that out of the way first. And it was a little difficult getting the innards out. It seemed to be snagged on one of the USB-C ports, but I was victorious. Now let's take a closer look at the bottom half of the case. As you can see, six of the 11 screws from earlier actually hold the innards to the bottom half of the case. Now that we have the innards out, let's take a closer look. There are two daughter boards on top with a heat sink between them and the main board. Now looking at the bottom, I can see there's an RF shielding there as well. We can wait to remove that last. Let's start by removing the daughter board that's furthest to the right, the one shaped like an L. There's only three screws. I've highlighted them in blue. Let's take these bad boys out. This one came apart pretty easy. It was only connected by one connector. Once I found it, I gently pried it apart. Let's take a closer look, starting with the top of the board. You can see several chips and components. I'll describe what I could find online, but some of the chips were not readable. Moving to the bottom of the board, there's not much to see here. There's a few transistors, components, and the main connector to the main board. Next up is the second daughter board. I'm not sure what this board is for, but since it's attached directly to the heatsink, I think it might have something to do with power regulation. There are three screws I've highlighted in blue which attach it directly to the heatsink. Let's get those out of the way. This board also was easy to remove, just slowly pried it off, pulling it straight up. Looking at the top of this board, you can see it's a bit busier than the previous one. It has a handful of large voltage capacitors, which I believe support my theory on power regulation. And again, unfortunately, most of these chips were either unreadable or there was no information online about them. However, there was one I was able to find, and it is a high input voltage converter highlighted with blue text. Okay, let's flip this over and take a look at the bottom. And this side is not as busy as the top, but there are a few chips and some large transistors, diodes, and two connectors where it was attached to the main board. The good news is I was able to find information on all the chips on the bottom of the board. However, the USB-C multiplexer might be putting a damper on my theory of this being a voltage regulator. If anybody knows any better, please leave some comments below. Alright, we're almost there. Let's flip this bad boy over and remove the RF shielding from the bottom. There are six screws, highlighted in blue, that hold the RF shielding to the bottom of the mainboard. board. 
With a bit of patience, the R of Shield was free. As you can see, it wasn't as easy as it looks to take that off. We're going to start with the bottom half of the board since the heat sink is still attached to the top. As you can see, the bottom is very busy, but it's mainly busy with discrete components and two chips. I was able to identify one of the chips which was part of the gigabit ethernet adapter. As for the other one, I could only get a partial name, so no information there. I do want to call out the soldering on the through holes for the DP or DisplayPort slash HDMI connector. As you can see, the holes are not completely filled with solder, which could lead to integrity issues since these are the main structural supports holding the ports in place. I have brought this up to Targus, the manufacturer, who were very receptive of the feedback. Furthermore, I've been using this dock for quite some time, and I have seen no issues related to this or otherwise. It's time to remove the heatsink, which is attached from beneath using five screws. Yes, more screws. Let's take them out. We're now ready to remove the heatsink. And I just want to mention, this is a fairly large heatsink. And you can see where the second daughter board was connected to the black connector, which has a hole carved into the heatsink for it. Also, the heatsink was not that easy to remove. There are some very large heat transfer pads on the underside that look much like the one on the top, the small pink one. And now what we've all been waiting for, the top of the main board. And yes, it is very busy, and the good news is all the chips are legible. The only problem is there's so many chips I couldn't put labels on each of them in the screenshot. So instead, I have magnified each chip to make them easier to read. The main chips I'm going to mention are the two large chips on the right side. Those are the main display link chips. The two smaller chips alongside each of the main chips that are labeled with an M are memory chips. Each memory chip is 256 megs in size, giving each of the main chips 512 megs of memory. If you want more information on the chips I could find information on, there will be a link in the description. Next up, I've labeled all the different connectors on the top of the mainboard. As you can see, there's a lot of those as well. You can pause the video if you want to review them in detail. Yep, it's that time now. Time to put it back together. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here since I've already taken it apart, which is basically the same as putting it back together in reverse. If you need to see this, just go back to that part of the video and watch it again. Let's hook it up. Starting with the power. Then the first of two DisplayPort cables. Then two HDMI cables in the bottom row. Then the last DisplayPort cable. Now the network Cat5 cable. And then the main USB C cable that connects to the PC. Last, we'll connect the USB C to the PC. And the PC we're testing here is an HP EliteBook 1040 G2. And as you can see from the video, it does work. Isn't it nice when you take something apart and put it back together and it still functions? I think so. Also, as I've mentioned before, I'm unable to test four 4K monitors since I don't have any. So instead, I tested what I do have, which is two 3K monitors in the middle, which are Dell curved monitors, and two HP Full HD displays. 
I'll put more information on the monitors in the description. Lastly, I wanted to show you what I've been using this docking station for in my everyday work for the past year or so with my 16-inch 2019 MacBook Pro, and I've been very pleased with this docking station's performance for everyday work tasks. I've had no issues with charging or displaying the monitors, and I plan on continuing to use this docking station until something better comes along. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe. This was Jam for Mad with your Tech Tech and More, signing off.